you as, a, as an individual can come in here and we will spend the first week finding out about you. Who are you? What do you like? What don't you like? Um, all, all sorts of things about you so that we can then start to, to help you to learn the things that would make you be able to lead a good life. Mm -hmm. So we say that the school is about basically testing children um, in an enforced environment uh, for the purposes of basically passing tests. Our interest is in assisting young people to learn so that they can lead a good life. And mm -hmm. that um, the school is about, uh, if you like, a culture of tests. And we're saying we're interested in how you deal with the tests of life, not a, a mm. regime of tests. This is the Agentic Schools podcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg. All right. Hello and welcome. Um, we are here with Ian Cunningham of SML College. Uh, Ian, why don't you give us a little bit uh, about where you are and, and, and SML College? Okay, well, I'm on the south coast of England, county of Sussex, just outside the city of Brighton and Hove. Um, my sunny day here. Um, I'm in my home office, not in the college. Uh, it's our vacation time, uh, but in any case, it's a uh, Saturday and I wouldn't normally be in, although I'm in college tomorrow. Uh, we're, um, we call ourselves a college to avoid using the word school, because if we uh, made ourselves a school, we would have government inspectors, namely the Office, 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 Ofsted, office of Standards in Education, um, on our backs and demanding that we had a curriculum and did all the sort of thing, the school things. So we um, are uh, committed to a self-managed learning approach, which means that we operate as a democratic learning community. There is no imposed curriculum, there are no classrooms, there's no imposed timetable. Uh, we work as a community to decide on how to spend our time and individuals are free to learn anything they want with the only rule being uh, you're not allowed to interfere with other people's learning. Mm -hmm. Right on. So uh, what is the age range that uh, SML College serves? 9 to 17. I mean, 16 normally, but if some want us down a bit, that's fine. Um, and so we take from uh, nine-year-olds, but people enter 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And and you said you don't have classrooms, but do you have a, a, a like campus or a facility that you work out of? Yeah, um, we've just uh, rented a, pr a previous uh, small, what we call a primary school over here. Um, and uh, it was being allowed to go to waste and we managed to get it from the local council. Um, so we have, uh, what we do is to run parallel programs we have one in the morning and one in the afternoon so there'll mm. be i think in september there'll be about 37 in each um, oh, okay. and the reason for this is because if we do more hours then we'd have to register as a school and if we register as a school we'd be closed down because we don't have a curriculum and we don't have teachers and we don't have all the things that school is supposed to have so we're kind of it's a catch-22 if you like um, right so so you're uh... It sounds like you're you're operating within a very particular um, uh, regime of, uh, of of how the government views mm. school, how they view education, um, and that you're sort of fitting yourself in in a way. Now, are, are the are the kids coming? So you have you said you have two different programs. So, are the kids considered sort of homeschoolers, and you're a resource for them? Is that the kind of like is that where you fit in, or yeah, how does that work? Yes, the, the the government and the local authorities tend to say this is home education. Okay. However, in English law, there are, there are two options. You go to school or you go do otherwise. So we are otherwise in law. Uh. Um, and um, the tricky bit has been, uh, well, it's, it's tricky for the government, great for us, is otherwise is not specified in law. Um, mm. But school is specified in law. So therefore, if you call yourself a school, you have to register. And it's a criminal offence. You can get put in jail if you if you open a school illegally. Um, whereas we're saying, well, we're other than school. And yeah. the nice thing when we have the argument is that 
the law doesn't say school is preferable. The law just says there's two options. And law okay. and, and people assume that school is the default, but actually in English law, it isn't. The, 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 the two modes of school or otherwise have equal status. Nice, nice. Okay. And, and when, when um, a family encounters you, could be the kids, could be the parents, um, like if they're, if they're completely naive to what you're up to, how do you describe it to them? Well, pretty, pretty simply, really. Um, uh, students come to us either because they've been home educated and uh, then uh, they want somewhere, or their parents want somewhere where they're in a community where there's a social engagement that they might not have had. But a majority come from school. So obviously yeah. we have to say, look, we're interested in you taking charge of your own learning. That actually you do that anyway, uh, but not always very well in school, for instance, uh, at the moment, out of 9 million uh, school children in the UK, 1.6 million do not attend regularly. In other words, they're, mm -hmm. they're managing their own education by just choosing not to go to school most of the time. <laughs> and, and for some of them, in uh, you know, when you get to age 15 or 16, and in some of the poorer areas, the classes are about 50% attendance uh, on an average day. So they're already people are already choosing to do something else. So we're saying, right. but why not make a good choice? <laughs> Uh, why not take charge of your own learning? Why don't you? Because we know that from all the research that people who take charge of their own learning and learn well um, have happier, more productive and useful lives. If you do what the state tells you, um, it's less so. So that mm -hmm. um, you as, a, as an individual can come in here and we will spend the first week, week finding out about you. Who are you? What do you like? What don't you like? Um, all, all sorts of things about you so that we can then start to to help you to learn the things that would make you be able to lead a good life. So mm -hmm. we say that the school is about basically testing children um, in an enforced environment uh, for the purposes of basically passing tests. Our interest is in assisting young people to learn so that they can lead a good life. And that mm -hmm. um, the school is about, uh, if you like, a culture of tests. And we're saying we're interested in how you deal with the tests of life not a, a mm. regime of tests. Yeah, yeah, very nice. So, um, in, in terms of, um, so, so you've got nine to, to 17 ish. Yeah. Um, and, and so, so, and, and you said there was just the one rule of, of, uh, how did you say it? The one rule? Well, it's, it's the main rule. There are then subsidiaries that the, 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 the community will agree on. But the main rule is, is that you can learn anything you like, literally anything you like, so long as you don't interfere with the learning of other people. Right, if you're right. in a community, it's about, you know, you all have, right, you have a right to ask for anything you like, literally mm -hmm. anything. Uh, but you don't have a right to stop somebody else achieving what they want to achieve in their lives. Um, and that's why we have laws about... Uh, murder about theft right, about right. all sorts of things you know it's because they interfere with individual rights so we want to protect the rights of each individual to be able to live as they wish to live mm -hmm. and so when when conflicts occur how do you how is the that you like when things like that happen what how do you handle it or how is it usually handled? so there's just there's three levels of uh, work first of all it can be worked out informally often the community is very good yep. At that um, one of the things we do for instance someone wants to join our community is that they come for a week's trial mm. and uh, just at the the in the summer the end of term before the vacation we had a boy who came and he was being insulting to this girl um, mm. and the other girls just turned around and said look you just don't do that here you're not allowed to do that please desist and etc and he in the end stopped doing it but they said you know you, you don't do that here you may have done that in a school um, uh, and you think it's banter, but it isn't banter, um, and you just don't do it. And and it mm -hmm. was sorted by the girls, because I was right one of the adults, we call them learning advisors, was was there and just said what a great job the girls had done in in, in stopping this boy being insulting to somebody. Um, but as the, but that may not work. So the second level is is a restorative justice approach. Mm -hmm. uh, sit down with with two people and, and try to work it out. And the third stage, which is rare, is a judicial committee. And we mm. have one staff member and two students on a committee and they will investigate any case and, and then um, uh, and they need to come to a consensus. 
if they don't, mm. it has to be referred back to the community meeting. But if they can reach a consensus, then that's reported to the community that um, there's been a consensus about what should happen about that incident. Um, mm. And uh, and the, the, the Judicial Committee has the full uh, rights uh, in the community, so long as, as I say, it can reach a consensus. Mm -hmm. So so does the, the committee recommend action that is then implemented by the whole community or is it more of a like here's what's going to happen yeah they, they they well they recommend something to the individual so, oh, I see. Um, um, uh, the only time the judicial committee met in the last year was um, a boy who had actually been sent by a school we do get some children who who the school pays for to come to us and it was a kind of last Ooh. resort yeah and yeah. we knew that he he had a difficult time and that he could be difficult um, and that, that and there had been restorative justice processes and in the end the judicial committee said well look you, this is what you have to do you have to show each day that you're you're going by the rules and mm. um, he didn't so the, the committee said well he has to leave that he has to go back to school it's not being excluded from education he has a school place and he can go back to school because um, he clearly doesn't want to be within this community um, right. That's the only one case in in the last probably about eighteen months. Mm, nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, so so one of the things that y you mentioned and 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 this falls within sort of the the definition of school that that you're you know working within is the the idea that there's not a curriculum. Um, would it be fair to say that it's it's but it might be also described as more of an emergent curriculum, something that comes from the students rather than a lack entirely? Yes, they they come up with what they want to learn. So we yeah. will have um, over seventy students, and there'll be seventy curricula if you like. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, they what we what we do in the first week is to ask them a series of questions to help ah. them to formulate this. So we say, first of all, where have you been? What's been your past experience in your life mm. and in education? And a lot of them have had bad experiences, but we, we need to know this because anyone today is 100% result of the past. So if they're, for instance, resistant to doing things, you know, for instance, it's quite common for, for um, a nine-year-old to say, I'm no good at maths mm, right. and because they've been badly taught and they, they, they've uh, perhaps missed the lessons and maths is hierarchical so if you miss a few lessons and you're not being helped to catch up then you don't catch up ever um so so they will so we then want to question where where they are in maths or art or anything music they're all of these things that they've been told by somebody that they're no good at and we have to mm. question that um it, it, it's interesting that this, this the young people that come from schools are more likely to have a negative uh, view of themselves if we ask them right. about, about their past experience. And, if, and then the second question is, well, where, where are you now? What kind of person are you? What things you care about, the, your values? And what do you believe in? You know, what do you hold to be true um, about the world and about yourself? And try to help them to explore that. And this is done within a group of a maximum of six students and one of mm. the team, um, uh, one of the learning advisors. So, um, uh, and then we say, the third question is, well, where do you want to get to in life? Who do you want to be? What kind mm. of things do you like to do? Some people that may be career, but uh, for the older students, but for younger ones, it may well be just, oh, I'd like to learn this. I've got, you know, classic being, I don't know, they want, I want to improve coding. Or, or I'm making a computer game, but I need some help to make it better. So, okay. <laughs> so they, they might just have a shorter term goals, but the... Older students, because the narrowness of the English educational system, have got to make choices about uh, exams, public exams that they're going to take, mm. and what that mm. might mean in terms of their future life. So, obviously, we try to help them to think more broadly. You know, what life do you want to lead? It's a really right. basic question. What is it, you know, when you leave here, or when you finish your education, whenever that might be, um, who would you be? What kind of things would you be doing? Uh, mm. what's going to matter to you and, and initially people find that uh, too open almost you know but then you <laughs> then question it well would you, would you like to be in a family okay would you like to live in a house you know and those students mm. uh, not lived in a house <laughs> and and they they think yeah that'd be nice um, uh, would you like money or do you, do you not care about money uh, and so on so 
prodding them to think and we, and we don't necessarily expect them to come up with good answers what we're trying to do is right. what the education system calls metacognition it's not just that they're thinking but they're thinking about what they're thinking about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that that they focus attention on uh what matters to them as opposed to in school what matters is what the teacher wants to teach this, the child in our place right. it's not um You've got to start with the individual learner. So we go, where have you been? Where are you now? Where do you want to get to? And how will you know mm. if you've arrived at where you want to get to? Which is making judgments about yourself. Because self-assessment and self-judgments are crucial in life. You know, How do you choose mm -hmm. a career to go into if you don't make a self-assessment of yourself? And so many people make the wrong choices about career because they don't know how to... They don't know themselves to, mm -hmm. to make those mm -hmm. choices. So... We know that they're not going to do a great job necessarily, especially the younger ones. Uh, some people do, but most most still struggle with that, and that's okay because we're going well. That's we'll continue to work on this. You know, each term we can revisit these um, uh, factors, um, uh, but we try to get them to write it down, mm. and again, emphasise. You're not. It's not like a school. You're not writing it up, doing an essay. It right, right. Notes. It could be. You dictate it, it could be you draw pictures, it could be all sorts of ways you want to express, this is who I am, this is what I want to achieve in life, this is how I'm going to achieve it, and this is how I've achieved it. And so uh, that's the whole first week. And, and I think that mm. the, the analogy I've sometimes used is like if you're going to uh, a doctor and you walk in and the doctor says, uh, just take two of these pills twice a day, and if you're not feeling better in two weeks' time, come back. And you go, mm. what don't you want to know about me? Don't you want to know what's what I need? Right. <laughs> uh, well, it's the same in education. You know, teachers do that. They're basically saying, we know what you need. We haven't bothered to ask you. We're just going to tell you. And we've come to a conclusion about what you need, even though you may not like the conclusion we've come to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so interesting. There is a um, here. In, so I'm in Oregon in the USA um, and there's a um, woman that started a, she was a college professor and, and she um, realized that, you know, she was, she had this, uh, I, I don't know if it was a capstone, but she was dealing with seniors pretty regularly. And, and, and she would ask them, what do you want to do after, after you're done here? And so many of them were like, I hadn't even thought about that yet. And she thought it was so absurd that nobody asked them, about those questions uh so she actually ended up starting her own program it is now unfortunately the the uh transformed and is no longer offering the the kind of central they, they were they because of the regulatory environment started a, a, a what we would call a community college um, but basically it was just a, a program um that were in which they could get an associate's degree in self and society which basically is just ask, ans asking and answering those questions that you're talking about um just because it's just a, a a gaping hole in in the way our system works um is it, it just that is you're told what to do you get the diploma and for people and this was true for me it's like you get the high school diploma and then you just go on to the college and that's just what you do um and there's no interrogation of who am i what am I good at? What should I be doing? What do I want to do? Um, so she started a whole program for that. And, and unfortunately, it has since uh, gone by the wayside because of, you know, dynamics in society. But um, but yeah, it's really uh, an interesting thing how rarely children are a, a, of any age are asked rather than told. Um, so so. Um, Tell me a little bit about like like um, you, how long have you been doing this? The the, the college has been going twenty two years. Um, the oh, approach exactly. predates the, the college in that we, I worked mainly in the adult world. I worked in the business world. I was uh, chief executive of a small business school, and and um, we were using the self managed learning approach um, with organisations, and it works the dream. I mean, it's it's very easy to go right, to a company right. and say, "How would you like?" this place to work better and they go yeah and they're going well people here if the people were better at what they did would that be a good thing yeah well and the only way people change really is through learning so let's look at how they learn and here's the research which shows that um 
school, college, training course, universities, etc., contribute at most 10 to 20 percent of what makes a person effective in their work. And most of what mm. we learn is all through other things. So why don't we pay attention to these? And most of them are free. So let's just stop spending all this money on training and think of mm. um, a more effective ways that people can learn. And that's a very easy sell in a in a business. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, like, yeah, absolutely. This is this sounds great. It's just what we want. We want, and we want people who are more self-managing, more creative, more able to get on with other people, uh, innovative, uh, self self-managing people. That's what businesses want. And so, it, right, right. it was not difficult. But uh, you know, I got persuaded to do some work with young people, and so we ended up setting up the college. Right on, right on. And <clears throat> so. When you when you think about your your program, um, t t tell me a little bit about like like some of the one uh, you know think of think of tell me a story basically um, of of some of the you know a, a kid or or someone who has gone through your program um, that really um, um, you know shines that really really uh, you know stands out as somebody who really took advantage of what you had to offer. Yeah, well, a good example, and I can mention the, the name because she has been in the local newspaper, uh, Coco. Mm. Um, she um, came to at age 13 um, with a diagnosis of ADHD and dyslexia. She was pretty much kind of eased out of school because they said, well, she just doodles all the time and she doesn't seem to be learning very much. Um, and when she came for uh, most of the first year, um, because of her ADHD, she kind of sat on the sofa and often annoyed people, but what, what, you know, wanted to talk to people. Um, and she made little models out of out of plasticine, um, and she uh, doodled a bit, and that was about it. And 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 some of the staff were going, well, well you know, uh, what's she doing? <laughs> you know, what help can we give her? And I'm just going, well, let's be patient and see what happens. So when she was 15, she published. Uh, a graphic novel that was sold mm. really well. The publishers couldn't believe a 15-year-old girl had produced it. Um, <laughs> she, um, she also did, we, you know, we have these public exams at the age of 16 called the General Certificate of Secondary Education, GCSE. Mm. So she decided to do law. I have no mm. idea why, because I didn't really work with her. Um, and, and she explained that, you know, law because it requ it's very literal yeah. and you're thinking well d doing art and things and she was fine at that but, and she said oh well i learn visually so she was creating uh, little stick men in, in the mm. english system you have bar barristers and solicitors and they're two different roles in law and and she was able she did speech bubbles as a way of, of, of learning mm. but, also, but i was asking her about well how are you learning this? And she was saying, I was just reading the book because basically law, this textbook, it's, it's, if you know how to manage your own learning, you can read it and you can do it. But I said, yeah. well, would you like to meet a lawyer? So she said, yes. So we brought in someone as a lawyer and they chatted the whole morning and one or two of the other students joined in and they talked about law, things that I didn't know about. Um, and then I said, well, would you like to see law in action? And, and she was 15. So you're allowed if you're over 14 to go in in what's called the magistrate's court so this is a court where the um offenses are um serious but they're not um you know you don't have murder or anything like that right it's a higher court so if you're over the age of 14 you can go in to uh, to observe in the gallery um and so uh we, she said yeah that'd be great so we went along to the the, the local court and sat there and watched the courts and i said that that's what the lawyers are doing and now this is this is the role of the clerk, and this is the role of various people, and you could see how the law worked, and um, and you you would have some quite nice juicy trials, um, assault, uh, lots you know, people done a lot of uh, burglaring and and etc. So um, you know real cases that, are, and you could see how the law operates. Um, now the interesting thing there is, of course, what we do is an offer. I mean, we she was she had a goal to get the law mm. of GCSE. My role is then to say here's another way of learning it. Maybe you talk to a lawyer and she had the right to say yes or no. Right. Um, right. You could say, no, I'm not interested. I just want to learn out the book. Or we can go on to this law court and see this. And she had the right to say, no, I'm quite happy with what I'm doing or I want to do something else. And so, but she set the goal. So, 
I know where she is, which is, you know, when she started, she didn't know very much about the law. Where she ended was she passed the exam. She actually passed, not a high grade, but, you know, passed. Um, and uh, that's pretty much how it works a lot of the time is, is you know, we, we, uh, we have some formal structures, if you like, like, like um, uh, what we call a learning group, where, where the, the, the six students of a similar age will negotiate what they're working on, their goals and mm. achieving them. But a lot of it is within the community, people just chatting and you know, finding out about things to, to engaging with. And obviously we adults play a key role. In, I mean, I needed to be there to be able to offer those options. Right. So I have a role, but it's a role as an offering and then and mm-hmm. support yeah 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 it's interesting it reminds me um i was uh i i w- volunteered and uh, at uh, the village free school uh for a while uh did some research there and then uh, anyway there was this one time we were out um visiting no wait this was wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, it was it was village free school. So we were we were visiting a courthouse here, and um, and the, and the kids in my in the group that I was leading around were uh, probably younger. You know, I don't think any of them were teenagers. So it was uh, probably in that <clears throat> nine to twelve, eight to twelve range age range, um, and it was really fascinating because you know school groups go around courthouses all the time. In fact, the reason we were there was because it was a day designated for school groups to be in the courthouse and and do a you know various things. So we we go in and and <clears throat> this one judge decided to you know like ask about the uh, schools you know like what school are you from and stuff. So uh, so one of my one of the kids gets called on and and you know she's a word village free school and and says wait, wait free you <laughs> know like she didn't understand so. <clears throat> When the uh, when she described what we how we how the school operates, you know we get to do whatever we want, <laughs> was what she said. And the uh, you know the judge just didn't didn't understand um, and didn't think that was a good idea. But uh, but you know nothing she do that. Uh, anyway, later a little later on, <clears throat> we're uh, we were actually kind of thinking we were done with the court uh, house for the day, and so we were looking for a way out. And and it was the the particular courthouse was a very old courthouse uh for for americans anyway built in the 18 no uh, 1920s i think um a little bit older building so we find this staircase and we're just going down this staircase and and in walks this person and he looks up at us from below and says uh you you don't know where you're going do you <laughs> and we're like no we don't and he said, "Oh well, you know, this is how you get out." And they, but but would you like to see a judge's chambers? <laughs> and we're like, "Oh, great!" <laughs> um, so so we it turns out we ran into a judge on the stairs and and were invited into the judge's chambers and got to see the courtroom, which is nothing any other school group got to do because you know we were kind of going around on our own and and outside of and also as a smaller group than most schools were were doing uh, and you know he judged the size of the group to be reasonable but it's those opportunities like that of just being in the community and and available for opportunities to arise um and then and then taking advantage of them you know and that just happened to be in a in a courthouse um very cool very cool Mm. um so so is there like what is your like you said you know uh kids come to you they may have experiences and even labels from the regular school system um what is what is your kind of relationship to those kinds of labels and things is that something that that you pay particular attention to or how do you deal with with those things well there's the saying that if you've met one autistic child you've met just one autistic child um you know that (laughs) that, uh autism as as we know is a growing uh diagnostic label uh and um of course, they they vary. Um, so we, mm. we we do give opportunities for people who've got a label, but also to explain what it is that they may have a problem with, like uh, loud noises, maybe mm. uh, an issue for some, or just a place being overly hectic. So then it's about talking with them about what how they manage that, but also raise things within the community. You know that that mm. um, 
how do we deal with, for instance, uh, loud noise? You know, one of the issues we have a lot of students interested in music, and um, uh, we've got a drum kit, and so we've mm. just moved into this building, and we we're, we built a soundproof recording studio so that the drum kit can be in there because nice. clearly uh, it's especially the bass drummers, you know, that that kind of doom, mm. you know, and it uh, if people are passing the music room and the bass drum is being really thumped as as teenagers do. Um, that's not pleasant. So, so, um, so we can make accommodation within the, within the building, but also it's about individuals knowing, you know, if you're, right. this person doesn't deal very well with loud noise, then don't go shouting at them because you know, it's, right. <laughs> it's unpleasant for you, but it's more, it's painful for them, you know, and, and, mm. and, and, the, um, and so one of the important things in community, of course, is that both sides, you know, so someone who's, on the autistic spectrum, learning that they can ask and that they can get things that they need, but also for people who are neurotypical to understand someone who is in the neurodiverse right. area. It, it's really important that we understand how people are different and uh, how we accommodate those things. So it's back to the, you know, the, the community is really important. We have a community mm -hmm. meeting first thing uh, and last thing in a session, first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. last thing in the morning, same in the afternoon. Um, yep. Every day, mm -hmm. uh, because we think that's important. Now, sometimes those meetings are quite short, especially at the end of the morning or end of the afternoon. They may be just 10 minutes, five or 10 minutes. There's been some issue or people just want to say something. Um, first thing in the morning, there may be, you know, long, sometimes there's longer discussions needed around some of these different uh, issues of difference and how we how we address difference as a community. Yeah, yeah. And And how many adults are in this space? We we'll usually have four, five, six. I mean, uh, around, um, and uh, but that's someone who's an administrator, and then someone who's more full time, uh, and others that come in to do sessions. So, um, you know, we we I mean, we're keen to have a variety of resources, but obviously we're small, so we can't have um, someone to cover the whole spectrum of the curriculum in a, in a school every day. So we. Right. So someone doing music will be in uh, perhaps two or three days a week. Someone doing art will be in two or three days a week. Same with computing, uh, the IT side. But what, of course, the role of the adults is to help them to learn to use particular tools. So in the computer right. room, uh, Zach, who's our, our guy doing that, will help people to learn to use particular pieces of software so they can go off and do the projects. And then, you know, he'll leave them and, and, and be back, you know, uh, he's, he's usually in Thursday, Friday each each week. And so he'll work with them on showing them a new piece of software, for instance. So they've mm -hmm. said, well, mm -hmm. using Scratch, now I want to use Blender and they are doing animation, yeah. whatever. So he, uh, same in art, you know, that the, um, Liz, who, who uh, inci incidentally, Liz is uh, our art learning advisor, is on the autistic spectrum. Uh, and she, and she, um, models how you work in that way but also again helps people just learn tools and techniques um if somebody's wanting to do photography or they want to make a we had a ball last year we we, we decided not to follow the american model of, of a prom but to have a ball mm. so the girls yeah. made ball dresses and she was having mm. to help them about how you sew and how you make a ball dress some of them were quite elaborate um nice. uh, but Again, they could carry on doing that when she's not there. You know, so so but, yeah. but there'll be other adults around always. So there's always adults in the building who can help, but not necessarily with precise techniques like sewing a ball dress. But 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 this would be in three days a week. You know, so she can she can. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so do you see at the SML college as as a model that you'd like to grow and replicate or is it something like how do you see the moving forward kind of in the future uh, do, is it sort of something that is great for your community and and it'll you know forever be there or is it something that, that you see as a replicable possible model uh we, we very much being called upon to to and, and it's interesting because in in England, because of the constraints we have, it's quite difficult, and we are helping other people to set up other centres around the, mm. the country. But I've worked in a number of countries. Uh, I mean, Finland and Sweden are both very uh, open places where I've worked. Uh, in in um, British Columbia, 
uh, North Vancouver mm. School District, yeah. the Windsor House School, I did some work with them, or in Puerto Rico with the Escuela Nuevo. So and joined them some of the tools and techniques. In fact, the how I got involved with working with schools was because at the International Democratic Education Conference in the UK, I think it was 1999, something like that. Mm. Um, uh, and um, Yaakov Hecht from, from Institute for Democratic Education in Israel was there, heard me talk about self-wise learning and said, maybe you'd like to come to Israel because we think the democratic schools could learn something from this. So I ended up spending a couple of weeks mm. uh, and going to schools and doing some workshops and showing people the kind of approaches we used and then right. ended up back in my city saying, well, this is a bit crazy. I'm not doing anything in my own town, you know, and I've been helping people in Israel. So. Um, so I've worked in a number of countries and just sharing the, if you like, the methodology and the and the mm. processes we use, like the use of a learning group, like the use of these five questions and what we write it up into something called a learning agreement, um, mm. how we make the communities work, um, the role of, of, of staff, you know, where there's uh, different roles. What, the role that I play with a learning group is that my job is to is to learn about all those people as whole people, but but I'm not there right. to help them to learn specifics. You know, I will be in a group and somebody's going, I want to learn to make a board dress. Well, I don't know how to do that, but I'll go, okay, <laughs> um, what do you want to do? What resources do you need? And then, well, you know, then you can go and book a session with Liz, who, who, who does that. So so there's, there's a different role uh, for us of how you understand this person as a whole person and then there's right. a group of people who may have an expertise that they can offer that means that they they need to know the person but they don't need to know everything about the person right and i need to know everything that's going to impact on their learning so mm -hmm. so as, as my role as a learning group advisor to, to, to take the title is is to understand those human beings as whole human beings and to understand the problems they have and the ways of thinking that they have and and all the diagnostic labels that you, you you've alluded right. to uh, I need to know all that so that I can then int interact with others within the community, other adults in the community, where they can offer something to, to people that I'm working with. But, but my role is, is not to be helping them to learn anything particularly, except about themselves, right. which is the most important thing to learn, of course, but that they're learning about themselves in the group and learning what they want to learn. But I'm not the one who's helping them to learn that because I've got to go out and grab somebody I don't know anything about software right. <laughs> I'll go to Zach and say this student wants to learn how to use Blender so Zach will know precisely what that means and so he can engage with that young person and it's not my job to do it it's his right and, so, and but that methodology right. which we spread into other countries yeah yeah so so I'm curious about um so you have the advisor role and sort of expert in you know somebody who can in can share expertise in mm. that advisor role. Um, you know, is that how is it? What or what do you look for when you're when you're kind of hiring someone into your program to fill that role? Um, is that a challenge? Is that something that that like you can find the right people pretty easily? Or how how does that work for you? Yeah, it's it's not easy. Um, but we have a pretty rigorous uh, selection process. So there'll be mm. somebody's applying, they'll be interviewed by the adult team. They'll also be interviewed by students. And mm. also, most importantly, what we do is to put, give them a one-to-one -one session with a student that they've never met and say, okay, you've, you've got half an hour with this person. How are you going to help them with something? Mm. And uh, it's their job then to to do the stuff that I'm talking about, you know, like... Um, I often say that my role as a learning group advisor is to ask questions because I don't know the answers to any of them. I'm asking the person, you know, who are you? What do you like to do? Uh, what, what, you know, you, you didn't do that. What was the problem? Um, mm. Whereas a school teacher, of course, ask questions because they know the answer because you're okay. testing. Them. So, so um, often school teachers are the worst ones for this, this role and they have to a lot to unlearn because they're used to just simple things like that. You know, and, and mm -hmm. getting used to the notion, you ask questions of this young person because you don't know the answer. They know the answers, or they, but they may not be able to articulate it very well, and you may have to help them to articulate it, but your role is to get from them mm -hmm. so that you, so that the community as a whole can be helpful to that person. Right, right. Yeah, interesting. 
yeah, it, it, it's um, it's interesting how how school has this effect both on the students and the teachers mm -hmm. um, that then can be counterproductive in this kind of environment. Um, you know that they learn patterns of of ways of being that kind of aren't necessarily compatible with with the uh, you know the show is called agentic school so it's really about you know how do we facilitate that agency and it's interesting and it, it speaks to the challenges of the school system that that in fact there is this uh, these patterns that are counterproductive to being an agent of your own learning um, and in the case of the uh, <clears throat> pardon the adults, you know, being an agent of the school to facilitate learning. And in fact, there's, a, you know, they think of themselves as, as teachers, but they're, you know, actually engaging in counterproductive, in, in patterns that are counterproductive to the learning, which is truly the center of what has to be going on. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, that's a really and, and that agentic approach, which I absolutely agree with, uh, having looked at some of your stuff and, uh, and, and, and a good example was uh, of a teacher who would uh, be a biology teacher in school, but very liberal minded and, and he joined our team and he, he uh, we were having a community meeting and he said, well, I've got this meeting at 10 o'clock with a student to, to look at the theory of evolution, you know, and then he said to this boy, and you book some time with me at 10.30 to do something else. He said, but would you like to, it, it would be better if you came at 10 because then we can have a whole hour or so on theory of evolution and uh, you know it's the most important theory in biology and etc and the boy said no i'm happy with seeing you at 10 30 thank you very much and he learned immediately that be, that by having these structures and processes in place you actually stop some of that imposition you know the, the, the boy right. said no i might want to learn theory of evolution sometime but right now what i want is a nice session with you at 10 30 on what i want Right, right. Yeah, and and that that's really the uh, you know a engaging that level of like oh do I want that you know and and then and then having the freedom to say yes or no, um, and and being clear, um, which is so so interesting. <laughs> um, so I I think I, I we I think this has been a fabulous conversation. I really appreciate your sharing about the SML College and 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 the approaches that you bring. Um, it, where would people be able to find you if you if they wanted to look things up uh, to look you up? Well, uh, they can email. It's Ian I A N at smlcollege.org.uk. Uh, we have a website uh, for self management learning college. Um, uh, there's a book, Self-Managed Learning and New Educational Paradigm, that I did a couple of years ago. The last nice. book I did actually was on leadership development because I still engage with that business world. Um, and I'm also happy to send people uh, free articles. Uh, there's also I've got a, a sheet with the different films about about our work, including the work we've done in schools, um, where nice. we've managed to go into a school on a no negotiation basis we say we will come in we'll run the groups the groups will create their own rules and they'll learn whatever they want and some schools where they're desperate allow us in so i i, I can send people uh, links just for those uh, movies um and Great. um uh and and free articles and papers whatever um you can just they can email me ian ian at smlcollege.org.uk and that would be the website as well, right? Uh, smlcollege.org.uk? Yeah, that's it. All right. Well, great. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now.